another segment of Plains Indian Sign Language. I'm Mike Fossatopa, I'm Osage, Cherokee, Muscogee Creek, and Ute. And Osage, I'd like to greet you by saying Hawe and Cherokee, OCO, and Muscogee Creek, Heshte, and for good afternoon or good evening, we say Fosse in Ute. Mado, thank you. I'm glad you're tuning in today. And for those, some of you have uh, never tuned in before, and uh, today I always make it to where we can kind of review. So for those that are first time viewers, you'll be able to see uh, this Indian Sign Language and be able to understand and pick up uh, where we've gone in the past. So it'll be a little bit of review. Let me set my drum here to the side and we'll go ahead and get started. This, um, this month here, November, it's Native American month. Here in Oklahoma, there were once 39 federally recognized Native American tribes here, nations. And now we're down to uh, 37. And uh, my tribe, the Yuchi tribe, was one of those that lost their status. Um, once, when our people first came here to Oklahoma, we came from different parts of the country in the four directions. And each one of the tribal nations had their own distinct um, language. Some belonged to different language groups. Um, and um, at that time, many of them had trouble uh, communicating and understanding one another, especially when it came to song uh, for our dances because many times we would invite neighboring uh, tribal nations to come over and uh, they would have a, a feast and be uh, followed up with uh, singing and dancing. And that's how we kind of exchange things. Uh, we, other tribes obtain rights to, to some of these dances they, that we've done and showed. And um, this is where it's very important that today that we preserve our culture in, in a way that we can pass it down to the next generation because uh, when I grew up as a little boy, my dad imparted into me everything that, that he had learned, what he had been told. And, and so we had to pay attention to what we were hearing uh, because there it became, contained the culture itself, the songs, the stories, you know, the rich history, uh, the way we dressed, the way we moved. Um, he was an artist. He was able to show me through, through painting uh, and the symbolism that uh, uh, reflected and represented uh, those indigenous people. And so culture is very, very, very important. So all bottled up, everything that, that's been deposited into me, I'm being able to live it through and to, to present it as a presenter, uh, as a dancer, as an artist, as an actor, as a storyteller, or a flute player, and now using this Indian Sign Language. The Indian Sign Language um, for us came about uh, through my great-grandfather, uh, Pasitopa, Champanaji Pasitopa, he's Osage. And he came into Oklahoma and walked across, came across, they come across that Neosho into Oklahoma, and he was just a little boy. At the age of 13, he uh, was in a horse race that toppled over, and in that accident, he lost his ability to hear and to speak. And so from there, he began to, to, to pantomime, to communicate to be able to use his hands with expression, with facial movements and gestures. And then later on in life, he grew up, he traveled north and lived among the Lakota Sioux for a time, which they were fluent in Indian Sign Language. And he picked up those expressions, those movements, those sounds with his hands. And uh, my grandfather, my uncles, my aunt, and a few of those that were close to him learned his sign language. My dad was a little boy and my uncle, but they can remember seeing my grandfather talking with his hands. So my grandfather, he knew quite a bit of that sign language. He was a quiet man as well as my dad, but dad was able to, to use that and impart that to me. A lot of times when we were doing shows, he would tell me what to do by directing me with his hands. And I had to, to watch that because that was one of the things that I'd learned. I watched his hands when he was singing. I watched his hands when he was painting. I watched his hands when he was beating. Everything he done was with his hands, very creative. 
So he would give me those motions, those notions, what what I needed to do, hold my head up, to, to look around, to, to move. And so that brought an awareness to me. That later on I began to pick this up and man I just knew what dad almost what dad was thinking just by by his movements, his body language. And so that's what we want to catch uh, in this uh, sign language. It's just not all just talking with our hands, but our whole body and character and everything is put in into that that sign language to uh, express um, words. And what I would like to see uh, with this sign language is that we could get the uh, the other tribal nations, you know, just not just my tribe, but to be able to take maybe the Muscogee language and use this sign language to put those words and you hear this, the word then you see the sign the Yuchis could do that they could and the Cherokee and Osage and implement it with their language program to where we would get a full array of culture all blended in together all right now coming from from back here moving to the front it's speaking to those those beginners, those first time listeners today, okay? When I re refer to me, I'll use my thumb. Now sometimes uh, sign language people will use their thumb and point at you and not necessarily point at you with their finger, with their pointing finger, because uh, sometimes that's a, a, an offense. So we have to be very aware of that culture and how they, they do it. That's just like they're saying their names. You know, um, the, the, the beautiful woman behind the camera here that's filming this. You know, it's my wife, Lisa. She's uh, she's Pawnee, and so the symbol for for Pawnee would be like his fingers, like that for those two feathers. If there was a Kiowa here, they had that. They'd do this. Um, that was the mark that whenever they were hunting, they would line that hair up with that hairline. And um, earlier we was discussing this, uh, say you were Lakota, uh, you would do this mark here. And that was because those people wore chokers. See, they always wanted to tell and present uh, tribal truths. That were we're not caught up in error and then people are misinformed because that's how easy our native culture is. It's been easily misunderstood. And so as uh, a cultural preserver, an educator, we want to present the facts coming from a native. And, all right, now, um, the Osages, you know, they, they had that uh, uh, the haircut down the back. They would use that. Sometimes they painted their face two colors, those symbols and those, for those warriors. So they understood by that hand sign what tribal nation, because they all had one. Uh, the Choctaws had that travesty where you, you did this. That, that uh, symbolized that uh, pattern work that they wore in their, in their, their patchwork. So that would be those, those crosses, just like that. All right. Okay, moving along. One finger. This is the sign for yes. 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 No. Use your hands down. No. 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 Now, the sign for tired is two, like this. I'm tired. For sleep, I'm sleepy. Or I was sleep. You might want to put your hands to the back. Was is in the past. Sleep. Now, so tired. Um, no. So you see the positions of the hand. No. Um, if something was bad, it would be this. It almost looked like go. Well, you know, whereas go is like that. It's expressing a cross. Okay, let's, let's go. And you maybe can point in that direction. So now, over here on this side here, um, for the sign of good, see a lot of times people think good is from the, the, the stomach, the bottom of the rib, out. But the, 
stomach, uh, it, you bring your hand up higher from your, from your heart. From your heart. Out. Good. Good. See, when we speak, we always want to speak from the heart. Now, here's, here's the one. Um, say something touched your heart. Well, it might have been uh, a, a, a thought, maybe a, a, a name, maybe a, um, maybe a dance, maybe something that somebody, something that they're wearing. And it touched you in a, in a, in a way that it was your heart. You would go like that, almost like light or heart touching. Now, when it really touches your heart like love, you go like that. You know, like you look at your kids, look at your children, you look at the ways that we have, or we look at the Creator, we love. Like that. So these are some some uh, different ones that we've never never used before um, in our, in this uh, presentation. And so now, um, let me go back just a little bit here and bring some more things uh, for our new beginners, our, our new listeners in there. Um, now, if we wanted to, uh, let's say you were asleep and you was dreaming and you could see that, that dream, maybe you want to catch it catch it and bring that dream to reality to now to right here or if you was playing the sport and somebody threw something to you like a ball or something you catch it a piece of fry bread gets thrown at you, you catch it <laughs> you eat it the part of it is, is that you begin to, to receive, you begin to, to, to understand these languages, uh, when sign language, these movements. Now, <clears throat> when one is speaking, you'll say this. Now, they said a long time ago, um, the Osage storytellers could stand in an array with the, the, the body structure, uh, movements, to where today, you know, in, in school, if you hear the teachers try to stand and tell the kids to be quiet, sit down, shut up, you know, it might be uh, disruptive to the, to the class, to, to the setting, but that's what they do to get their attention. But back in the old days, you know, those people um, understood the, the body language. Maybe if they had a fan, they'd hold that fan up. That was just like saying, get seated, get quiet, hear what I'm saying. And they was quick to respond. To that so that it was visual it was that visual aid of seeing that so understanding language position uh, and and standing like this it looks like a, a relaxed position but it also is confidence in this because you know what you're going to do you, you have that confidence to be able to express it so when we we speak we say this I'm going to speak now, if we say a name, um, my name, and then you'll give that signal. Um, let's say my last name, Pashatopa, um, Four Hills. So, I don't want to go like this, like lightning. You know, I could do, mm, that's lightning, but Four Hills, that's what Four Hills, that's what Pashatopa means, and uh, our symbol for that is a bu buffalo bull, big buffalo, and so our name pertains to that. That was an order that, that they had back then, the way that they lived in that, in that culture, in that setting. Each one had a, a life symbol. And there were stories that related to uh, the Osages, a, a leader seeking a, a, a story like the spider legend. And you can look that up uh, on YouTube. Uh, a lot of information out there. And uh, <clears throat> now, let me look here and see what else, which way we're going to go here with this. Um, 
Now, being that I've finally got to that place in my life where we, we refer to as elder status, um, how would we say uh, elderly or elder in Indian Sign Language? We would be like um, this mark right here. Okay? That's a sign for elder. Uh, and it refers to like if a <clears throat> like if a elder person was walking with a cane or a staff, this. And so that is one of the uh, signs that we use for elder. If it was a man, we would do this. If it was a woman, we put that for long hair and then hands right here. That's like for a mother or elderly woman. Man, this is always a sign they say for man. So elderly man. A little uh, children, we do this. Okay, these children are mine. Well, these children are going, they're growing. You might do the mark for the stature, you know, the height. Um, and so all of that can be used in, in sign language. Um, seeing something, we always do this. I see. Is good. Friend is this. So I want the audience, the, the audience out there that's watching, that we're friends. If we ever get a chance to meet, you can say I watched that sign language video. It was good. And so walking is this. Running is this, I mean, we walk, we took off running. Maybe other tribes may have a little bit different uh, expression on that for running. I don't think they would go like this, but it's take off. And then dancing is this. We use that to describe dancing. Um, my grandpa, you know, and a lot of friends I know that would sometimes use sign language, they'd do this for dancing. We, we understood what we, we were saying. Um, then uh, jumping, you know, we, we do steps like that. Or if we want to spin, we go like that. Or a twirl. Now, don't let that get confused with uh, what we refer to as prayer. You know, we do prayer like this. Or some use their hand up, going up, just like that smoke goes up. And sometimes they'll use that to uh, describe uh, holy. He's holy. That man. Holy. Since we've learned English, um, some of the, the signs uh, don't differ because it's with the hands now that, you know, we can go like this to just about every native and they know that those hands together is in reference to prayer. So when we do this, oh, when we're uh, maybe burning the cedar, the sage, or st starting a, uh, a fire, um, let's say something's hot, we do this. That means uh, hot. Um, and then uh, um, for smoke, uh, fire comes up. That, that fire is warm. Um, and then that smoke goes up. And so that's some of the, the expressions. Now, let's look at one for water. Water is this. Drink is this. Okay. Many 
of us elders, we like coffee. So if we want to say coffee, we remember there was a time that we used to have to, to uh, uh, grind our own coffee. So we'd have to put that in there and, and spin that thing and, and then drink it. Sometimes they would use a color, point at something, you know, uh, coffee's dark, point at something dark, maybe uh, around a fire uh, or something you add to that. And, and then they would say, you know, they want coffee. Good. Uh, food is this. Uh, if you're hungry, uh, go like that. Palm up. I'm, I'm hungry. Then, from there, um, when you're full, you bring it all the way up to the to your uh, to your top of your neck, your chin area. I'm full. Yes, it was good. So we we begin to to use those movements, uh, and and sometimes you know uh, for uh, laughter um, we have we have expressions for laughter when something was was funny uh, and, and a hearty laugh. Um, uh, it, it was it was character, you know, and uh, so some of those expressions. Could, could be brought out. You know, if you're telling a story and it was funny, then, you, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you would put a laugh to it, you know, and that, that brings some other ones that are listening and watching to catch it, you know, because, you know, sometimes if someone's telling a story, you might have your eyes closed, but suddenly when you hear something, a sound that catches your attention, it may startle you, and then you'll be able to, 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 to see what that storyteller is talking about. Um, like, you know, if there was two animals uh, that were fighting with one another in, in, a, in a battle, you know, this would to describe the, the rolling around on the ground, okay, with animals. Maybe it was a bear. Maybe it was a bear, or maybe it was a, maybe it was a lion, and they were fighting at that conflict going on. But man, they were on the ground moving. And so you'd have to, you know, kind of get back and, you know, for that word for fright, you know, step back. Um, and so, you know, you got to be alert. Watch expressions, watch your hands, because it's all, it's all there. It's all that, that uh, the, to be able to articulate it, demonstrate it, project it for the viewer. Uh, and, and know that, understand it, you know, take, take the notes and, and watch. Now let me look and see what else we got here. Um, now, let's say we're talking about uh, words of, of truth, honesty. We want our words to be straight. We don't want them, we don't, when we talk, we don't want to speak like this. That's, that's, those words are not, not true. We want our words to be honest and it's true. To stand is this. Sometimes what we believe in here, we have to stand up for it, to grasp it. Take it to receive it. To release. Let it go to disperse it. Distribu distribution, as we would say. For those young ones to receive and to um, receive it. <clears throat> and then, uh, just like right now, uh, I'm, I can see a lot of things going on right here where I am. And I, point out and uh, maybe the dogs are running um, dogs tails was wagging was barking um, for let's say a horse this would be a horse and then you gotta understand it by riding or saying that I own that horse you would say 
That's mine. See? Grab it. Put it across here. It's striking yourself. That horse. That's mine. You could say how many horses you have by your finger. One horse, two horse, three horse, four horse. If you want to trade, you know, do that turn it turn it around like this, see. Not meaning for you to turn around like this, but to 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 exchange. Okay. Now, um this, again, is Native American Month. Very important that we celebrate this time as indigenous people and reflect on our beautiful culture that's been passed down for many generations. And I want to see it continue. I want to see it flourish. And so this month, I want all of our young people to be proud who you are. Make your ancestors proud. Excel in education, sports, whatever you do, do the best of your ability and show that integrity that we have as Native people. So until we meet again, Madole.